Hello, we're going to look at the birth chart of musician David Bowie. The reason I'm looking at his chart is because he died on January 10. I'm making this video five days after he died, and yesterday I decided to look at his birth chart. He's in the news, people are posting about him on Facebook, uh, etc. So I was curious, I wanted to look at his chart. I especially was curious about his chart because about a half a year ago, in, in July 2015, I uploaded a tutorial video where I give a formula, we sometimes call these formulas astro signatures, a formula for what makes a person a rock star. I came up with this formula by looking at the charts of rock stars, uh, you know, Jim, Jimi Hendrix and Jim Morrison, etc., Aretha Franklin, and I found consistent things in their charts. That was about a half a year ago. So over this past half year, I and some of my colleagues have looked at charts of other rock stars, and it's really surprising me, surprising me at how well this formula works. Every chart we look like, every chart we look at fits the formula. So we're getting increasing uh, evidence that the formula actually works, uh, even better than I, I expected it would. And David Bowie, uh, his birth chart also uh, fits the formula. So I'm going to show you why, from an astrological viewpoint, he was a rock star, um, and the details of, of his personality, etc., are shown in, in this astro signature for being a rock star. Now, also, I want to mention that um, in, in these past few days after he died, I have realized uh, the tremendous impact that he has had on people. I knew his name. I knew a little bit about him. I really didn't know how incredibly successful he has been. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The, the um, huge impact he's had on people. I have a website here. Well, let me just show you the website real quickly. Um, so here's a website. Let me scroll to the top of it. Uh, of someone expressing their grief over David Bowie's death and the huge part that he has played uh, in this person's life. So these rock stars really impact people in very personal ways. What is it that gives them this power? We will see again the same kinds of astrological patterns that we see in the other rock stars in the chart of David Bowie. Um, and like I said, we, we've we've looked at many charts. I'm just going to show his because he, he just died. He's in the news. And um, as one example of how exciting these discoveries are. So what is it that makes a person a rock star? The main thing is typically the planets Venus and Uranus are in the 11th harmonic. They're either conjunct or opposition in the 11th harmonic. Now this sounds so far-fetched that some very, very minor harmonic is going to make a person a rock star. Most astrologers are going to say, I don't think so, give me a break. That's very trivial, that cannot be. So what we're finding is that what we have always assumed to be trivial, what we have assumed to be very minor, and what our, you know, doing charts of friends and family seem, seems to support our intuition that these things are not very important, is actually, at this point, it's becoming very clear that that is not correct. These seemingly minor things are not minor at all. Um, and so we'll, we'll see another example of here with, with David Bowie, that he has Venus and Uranus in 11th harmonic very strongly, just like most of the other stars of rock and roll. It's amazing that we have a an idea in astrology of what's going to produce certain kind of behavior and we apply it over and over again, and it appears to work. So we're now doing much more rigorous quantitative research um, that, that we think is going to validate these ideas um, in a much more solid way. Uh, so I'm showing you the state of the art, where we are right now in developing some of these ideas. Um, so the Rock stars often have Venus and Uranus conjunct or opposition in the 11th harmonic chart, and if not, it usually shows up in the natal chart or 8th harmonic chart. For fun, playfulness, and creativity, you'll see big patterns in the 5th harmonic. Um, 
So if Venus and Uranus are not aspected in these harmonics, it's usually in the fifth harmonic, and it combines typically with Pluto or other planets. So it's part of a major pattern. Now, if the musician uh, practices a lot and perfects technique, not, not all rock stars do, but if they do, they will have strong patterns in the 7th and 35th harmonic charts. That's what giving the, the uh, potential, the capability of sustained practice and perfecting technique. And if they're songwriters, or in other ways highly creative, and not all rock stars are songwriters, or, or, or highly creative, they just belt things out in, in an exciting way. But if they're songwriters and creative in those kind of ways, it will show up in, in the 55th harmonic. So that's the formula, and it works perfectly for David Bowie as it does um, with other rock stars. So here's his chart. And uh, as usual, I don't see any great indications of being a rock star in the natal chart, but in these vibrational patterns, we're going to see it. What I'm going to do here, I'm in the Sirius 2.0 software. I'm going to go into the data entry screen. I'm going to view or edit chart data. It brings me to the data entry screen. And there is a link here for David Bowie um, to the information on him at astro.com. This is extremely helpful because his birth data accuracy is only A accuracy. So I'm going to click on this link and it takes me into the browser so we can read about him, um, compare the birth time given at astro.com which is 9 a.m., and in the Sirius software, it has 9.15 a.m., so a little bit of a difference there, 15 minutes in time. Um, so let's scroll down. By the way, here's a link to the Wikipedia biography, extremely helpful, so you can go right there to Wikipedia without having to type anything in, just click on the link to read about him. And here are the source notes. So uh, some biographers give 9 a.m., uh, which is from his parents. So according to his biography, David Bowie's parents said he was born at 9 a.m. His former wife also gives 9 a.m. Um, now, maybe she's giving it because she got it from the parents. I don't know. Um, so several sources giving 9 a.m. Another uh, source, um, let's see, did, did, did Bowie... Uh, another source gives 9.30. Gary Long quotes him personally 9.30. So that's how we came up with 9.15 in the serious software compromise between the 9.30 and the 9. Um, but another source um, gives just before midnight, completely different time. So we don't really know. A lot of the majority rule is that he's born between 9 and 9.30, but we still don't know. Um because one source is given just before midnight. Okay, let's assume, let's guess the, that the 915 might be correct um, and see if it makes any sense. It may or may not, because maybe he wasn't really born between 9 and 930, but there's fairly strong evidence that he was. Okay, let's look at his 11th harmonic chart. We're going to also see, we'll want to look at his 5th, 7th, 35th, and 55th. I'll go ahead and select these now um, because as we read his biography, the biography is going to tell us that he that he does practice. Um, when he was very young, he, he developed proficiency. So whenever you see words like proficiency and technique, we are interested in 7 and 35. He's highly creative and he's a songwriter. And he's extremely creative and unusual and does a lot of different things. So this, we want to look at all these harmonics. Now, here's his 11th harmonic, and it just boggles the mind. There it is. Venus and Uranus conjunct with less than a 2 degree orb. It, it gives me chills. It's unbelievable that this formula works over and over and over again. Um, and it tells me it's a 5 11th. There's a 5 in the numerator, giving it a slightly more creative emphasis. But there it is, Venus Uranus in 11th harmonic in the 5th harmonic chart. And notice that Pluto is trying both of them. There, it's weak to Uranus. Um, it has a little over 3 degree orb to Venus, not extremely strong. We only allow 
a five degree orb. I have other tutorial videos on harmonic charts um, that explain what the orbs are. He has the Venus Uranus and Venus with Pluto involved a little bit. And also, he has a Sun-Moon conjunction. If he was born at 9.15 a.m., he has a Sun-Moon conjunction, and the Sun is making these hard aspects called sesquiquadrats um, to Venus and Uranus. Unbelievable, because when the Sun gets involved, it often indicates career, what you can do. You, you might say in the light of day. The Sun is giving its light to day. It's what your, your present and queer reality is, and that's what he is. If you do enough of these charts, this you, this is just mind-boggling how extremely well this works. There's the potential to be a rock star. Now, what's also interesting, we can go into the time adjust. I mean, again, I'm in the Series 2.0 software, and we can get an idea of what happens if he was born, say, an hour later. Uh, or let's do two hours later. Let's, let's jump two hours and see what happens to the sun. Actually, he's got a Mars, sun, moon, all within nine degrees. We allow a 16-degree orb. So three-planet pattern, very strong 11th hour, driving, impatient, dynamic person. The Venus, Uranus, Jupiter, and Pluto are involved. Amazing. Um, amazing because it, again, fits the formula of what we expect. If I jump ahead two hours, the moon has moved out of orb in two hours. It's up to 27. We allow a 16 degree orb. It Two hours later, it's out of orb. Um, this makes me think that the, the uh, 915 time is pretty close to being accurate. Um, if I go back the two hours, we're back to the sun-moon conjunction. Let's go two hours earlier. And now the moon is still within orb. So there's about a five or six hour time period, something like that, where the sun, moon, and the 11th harmonic is there. Because the sun and moon are, whatever sun and moon do has a huge impact on, on your life, um, he's extremely 11th harmonic. Not only is he a rock star, but he's a crazy wild rock star, crazy in quotes. I mean, He's, he's everything we think of as rock stars. He experiments. He's, um, you know, the, the experimentation with sexuality, etc. Uh, he fits a lot of what we think of as being a rock star. And his sun aspecting the Venus Uranus and with the moon. At this particular time, all of this is emphasized. Also, let's see what happens to the Venus Uranus two hours earlier. If I go two hours earlier, because Venus is a little before Uranus. If I go two hours earlier, um, well, it's only three degrees, so that's going to be there for quite a while. Okay, back to the original time. Let's jump. Uh, let's jump one day. Let's jump one day and see if this lasts for an entire day. I'm going to go back a day, and here we see it's 12 degree orb. So this is lasting about three days. This Venus Uranus. But when he's born, you know, two to three days it's lasting. When he's born, it's very, very close. So he's born within a short, you know, say that morning, maybe a 12-hour time period when the Venus Uranus is an 11th harmonic. Um, and and then he's born at the time. Uh, let me see here. What did I do? Let me just cancel out of this to get back to our chart. Um so he's born at this time that's very, very perfect with the sun coming in, aspecting the Venus Uranus, Pluto making a weak trine to the Venus Uranus, uh, and sun is also with moon and Mars. Huge, huge emphasis on this. Okay, so, so there it is. That is why David Bowie is a rock star. He has the potential to do it, and there it is. Now, he's a songwriter, etc. So let's see if anything is going on in the 55th harmonic because he's a creative type of uh, musician. He's not just belting things out and, you know, just wild rock and roll. He's also a songwriter and a creative. He arranges things. And in the 55th harmonic, because the Venus Uranus has only a two-degree orb in the 11th, 
The orb in the 55th will be five times bigger. I'm getting a little, maybe this is a little advanced at this point, but 55 is five times bigger than 11. The orb spread by five. This is why these tight orbs are important. It remains within orb in the 55th harmonic. Venus and Uranus are still in 55th harmonic, and Mercury's opposition it. So Mercury gets involved. This gives the ability to play music. You know, I've read a little bit about his biography. He, uh, by the time he was a teenager, he was a proficient saxophone player. Um, uh, when he was in uh, middle school, or what you might call junior high school, I guess around 12, 13, he showed talent for playing the recorder. Um, so Mercury, Venus, Mercury coming in, um, giving him cleverness and a creative ability with the Venus Uranus. And now look at this. Sun opposite Jupiter Saturn, extremely strong. Sun at 19, Jupiter at 19, Saturn at 17, all within two degrees. Jupiter Saturn gives um, the ability to organize, to structure things. So here in the 55th harmonic with the sun, which will is an indicator of career and what you can actually do and achieve and express. This means he's able to organize, design, and invent songs, uh, just about anything, uh, especially d dance, um, music. He is like a choreographer, a designer, a an arranger, uh, and a songwriter. Uh, so if you watch the other video on the 11th harmonic, you see that people like Carol King, um, Bob Dylan, uh, people who are songwriters having these very, very strong 55th harmonic patterns. And here again, we see the sun, Jupiter, Saturn, giving that organizational ability. Uh, now, going back to my PowerPoint, here are some notes from Wikipedia that I wrote down. So he's a singer, songwriter, musician, record producer. That's his son, Jupiter Saturn. He's also a painter. Maybe he has some fifth harmonic because he's so uh, into different things. Actor. I don't know how much acting he actually did. Uh, acting usually is 17th harmonic. We could also look at that, but I'm not sure if he actually did a lot of acting or not. Um, a lot of you listening you just probably know a lot more about him than I do. So let's say Bowie developed an interest in music while at Burnt Ash Junior High. Junior school and showed aptitude in singing and playing the recorder. When he left school, he studied art, music, and design. This is amazing. The key words that we see in the chart are the words used in the description. It, it's amazing. And became proficient on the saxophone. That's why I expected 7th or 35th harmonic, forming his first band at the age of 15. So if we look at his 7th harmonic... Um, we have a Sun, Mars, Pluto within three degrees. Um, well, that's that's all. That is more like a martial arts kind of thing. I wonder if he had any interest in martial arts. Um, if we look at his thirty-fifth harmonic, because of the power, controlled power. If we go to thirty-fifth harmonic, huge pattern, Moon, Mercury opposite Venus, Neptune, very tight. So what does that mean? 35 is the harmonic of disciplined play. Practicing your play shows up in athletes and, and artists who practice. Moon Mercury means um, uh, like a psychological understanding, an intuitive understanding. Venus, Neptune, idealistic beauty, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Neptune, is showing the, the temperament of a poet, an artist, a creative person who has a sense of mood, of feeling, of tone. There's a very strong moon, Neptune, setting the tone, the mood, the feeling with words and sound, the ambiance, the impact. Um, often they use uh, certain sound qualities. They'll bring in violins or harps or uh, choirs or any number of things to create the right impact and mood and soulfulness. Mercury Venus um, is the writer and poet. Um, so this is a artist, poet type of person working at it, 
35th harmonic, developing mastery. So this is giving him talent. So he's not simply, uh, you know, a belted out wild rock and roll person. He's deeply talented, interested in the themes, the moods, the history, the background, the culture, the feeling, the textures of things. Um, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Neptune, and 35th harmonic. Very common for artists, poets, writers, things like that. Who are deeper uh, and mature in their approach. Um, so he shows his talent at an early age. He continues to develop it. Now, reading more from Wikipedia, Bowie's impact was enormous. He changed the nature of rock music. Changed the nature. Well, then we're looking at 11, 55, which are very, very strong for him. He's got the Venus-Uranus conjunction in the 11th, which is the classic archetypal thing for rock power, and then it picks up other planets in both the 11th and 55th. By pick up other planets, I mean aspects additional planets, which strengthens it. During his career, he sold an estimated 140 million records worldwide. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1996, so he's a big deal. Upon listening to Tutti Frutti, do you know Tutti Frutti by Little Richard? Tutti Frutti, oh, Rudy, Tutti Frutti. It's this, like, fast, jumpy, um, powerful music. Bowie would later say, I, he I had heard God. This is classic. When I say classic, I mean you just see it over and over and over again. Venus, Uranus, and 11th Harmonic. That fast-moving, excitable music. Uh, here's another example. I saw a cousin of mine dance to Hound Dog. You probably know Hound Dog by Elvis Presley. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. You know, that kind of stuff. And I had never seen her get up and be moved so much by anything. It really impressed me, the power of the music. I started getting records immediately after that. Well, a lot of people get inspired by these songs. But if you have Venus and Uranus in 11th harmonic, this strong 55th harmonic pattern, um, and, and, the other, and the Sun, Moon, Mars in the 11th harmonic, you, you, this is a magnet for you. This is this this can engulf your whole attention, and that's what happened to David Bowie. This is what he did. Fortunately, you might say, fortunately because it stabilizes it and deepens it, he has that strong 35th harmonic, which allows him to develop the talent and develop some mastery. So Bowie stu studied art, music, and design, including layout and typesetting. So he's a complex person. People who do layout and typesetting have things like the Jupiter-Saturn, which he has in the 55th, 7th harmonic or 35th harmonic patterns. So he's got that discipline, that meditative, quiet attention, the sensitivity to the feeling and mood and texture and context of things, um, as well as the excitability. What's amazing about this is that we have a formula that fits every rock and roll musician we've looked at. We, we've come across other charts, we've looked at some of the charts that I didn't um, analyze in the first study. In the first study we picked out about a dozen charts. We've looked at the other ones. They fit over and over and over again. Uh, I think it was about a month ago we looked at Eric Burden, lead singer of the Animals. Uh, we hadn't looked at his chart before. Incredible! <laughs> it's just mind-boggling how this works in his chart over and over and over again. So I think we know, A, David Bowie was born in the morning. He was born in the morning when the Venus-Uranus was aspect of the 11th harmonic was stronger, uh, connects with his son in the 11th harmonic, has the 55th harmonic char chart pattern, which is going to move very rapidly. I'm, I would say 98% sure he was born in the morning. He wasn't born just before midnight as the other as one source indicated. Um, okay, so that's it, my friends. Here's some links to a link to our software company, which makes the Series 2.0 software, which I'm using in this video. Um, the link to the YouTube page and some other websites of companies, uh, astrology companies that I'm involved with. So, Final conclusion, I think this is exciting. When somebody like David Bowie dies, who's very important to thousands or possibly hundreds of thousands of people, and you want to know what is it about this person, the astrology, using this system we call vibrational astrology, shows these energetic patterns 
for what it is in the person. This is, I think, revolutionary. It, it's a revelation of, of how these things work. Um, and we're working on more rigorous research now. It's going to take a few years um, probably to complete um, where we will be able to test this with a rigorous quantitative uh, tests, what we call hypothesis tests, but this is the state of the art of developing these models for for how, astro how astrology works, and astrology may work in many ways. It may be that Hellenistic astrology works, Vedic astrology works, you know, there may be lots of things. I think we're just scratching the surface of an entire new discipline. Uh, the one thing about vibrational astrology is that we have very rigorous, controlled uh, studies. We have clear models which we're able to replicate our findings. Um, so this is one area of astrology that's moving forward very, very rapidly. Um, so that's David Bowie. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.